In the last lecture, we looked at how Construct 2 works. We went over behaviors and we went over the event sheet, amongst other things that really should hopefully have bootstrapped your ideas about Construct 2. I mean, it may have been overwhelming, it may have gone on for too long, but really, if I didn't talk for 22 minutes, that entire lecture could have been done in a minute and a half. You know, we really could have just made our platformer game in a minute like that. And uh, you'll be amazed the speed as to which you can make a game once you fully grasp Construct 2. I think I myself can make an entire running gun game with everything I could want, you know, all these different weapon types, all these different, uh, I don't know, lighting effects and levels and whatnot. If I had it all ready to go, I can make that game logic in about 10 minutes. And that's not to boast and say that this is the ultimate way to make a game really quickly. That's not the point here. The point is that Construct 2 helps me prototype better than anything else because it's so visual. It's not, oh, I can make this game in 10 minutes, therefore this is the best editor ever. It's not. It definitely has its shortcomings, but it's great for prototyping, and that's what I want to get you to use it as. I want you to use it as a prototyping tool, but it can also be used as a full-scale production tool as well. So hopefully you can view it as that. And this course, again, is geared towards those who have never programmed before and want to use Construct 2 as their first thing to learn. I think that's great. That is what this course is for. Maybe you have used Construct 2 before, but you never really understood programming. That's what this is. This is the ultimate way to learn programming because it's so visual. You don't have to worry about anything else. Then we have the other end of the spectrum where maybe you have programmed before. Maybe you're a better programmer than I am, and you know exactly what you're doing. You just don't like visual editors because you like programming so much, and you're used to syntaxes, and you're used to typing out code. Code. Hopefully this course can really explain to you why it's cool to use a visual editor, why it's faster, and hopefully you can understand how easy it is to just kind of do all the things that you would do in a language in Construct 2. So before we begin, let's look at our event sheet here, and you may have noticed in the last lecture that my event sheet is a different color scheme from yours. So to fix this, go File Preferences and go to the colors and change the theme to dark gray. I mean, you have a few options here, but click on dark gray and then hit load selected theme. You have to hit this first and then hit okay. I'm not gonna do it because it's going to require me to restart to have all the changes fully take place. So make sure you do that because when you make a major change like that, or when you're changing the style of the actual editor itself, you have to restart so all these changes can take place. You'll notice here that my tabs have finally have their color since I restarted Construct 2. Okay, so now what we're going to do before we really get into the nitty gritty of our logic is we're going to learn how everything in Construct 2 works in terms of the layout and the event sheet. So let's look at what I have laid out here. So I have our sprite, it's called Object Enemy. And it's really important that we take a look at this first before we go forward, because I really need you to understand how object instances work in Construct 2. This is basically the core of Construct 2 and why it works the way it works. So if you look here, we have our sprite. All I did was double click, make a new sprite and color it in just like we did before. And what I need to have you understand is you can have multiple copies of this sprite that are instances of the original copy. And that's really important that you understand because then you are able to filter out events for specific copies. And that's how you can really create modular events. And that's really where Construct 2 hits home at its core. So let's look at this. Let's add in a behavior to our enemy. So let's add in the eight direction movement behavior. And we're gonna get into doing variables next, but I really want you to look at these properties here. So we have our max speed as 200, our acceleration and deceleration 600 and 500, et cetera, et cetera, it goes on. But what I wanna show you is this. If I right click and clone this, then I'm creating a new object. I'm creating an entirely new object of this. This, yes, it has the same behaviors, but this is a completely separate object from this one. And most of the times, I'm not going to want to do that unless I'm making a new enemy altogether. So if I delete this off the layout here, you can actually see that I didn't delete it from the project and I could actually then just grab it again, but I'm going to delete this from the entire project because I don't even want a clone of this. I want a copy of this 
And this is where it gets really interesting because if I hold down control to copy, that's usually the shortcut. I'm sure you can copy control C, control V2. Let me try that actually. Yeah, you can. Uh, but anyway, so I'm gonna control click this to make a copy. And again, it's just control click to drag that out. You can see here that that didn't create a new object. It didn't add another one. So what did it do? it created an instance of the original object. Now I wish Construct 2 had a better way to describe it. Maybe it does somewhere and I just don't know it. Uh, but you know, uh, one way of doing that could have been to pluralize this. You know, we could have added an S onto this just to make it known that this is a copy of the original object. And the reason why this is important is because in code, I can target all of the enemies and I can destroy all of them. And I might not want that. I may only want to destroy en uh, enemies that are moving slowly or moving fast or have a certain variable to them. And that's when it comes in to filter these out. So now that I have this copy here, and it, it's really not important which one was the original one, uh, at least I don't think it is. I d I've never ever had an encounter where it's important which is the original. And maybe that's re why they don't pluralize it to tell you that this is original and this is a copy of it. But let's look at this together. So let's see, this one is at 200, 600, 500. Let's look at the copy. Let's change the speed of this to 500 and see what happens. Now you have the original at 200 and this one is at 500. So right off the bat, now you're able to understand that instances or copies of an object can have their own properties even though they are sharing the same behavior and they're sharing maybe other variables attached to them and they're sharing the same effects everything that is about them, it's basically like this is the parent and this is the child, yet the, they're all independent of themselves. And that's what really makes this powerful. So this has a max speed of 500. This one has a max speed of 200. So when we're moving, we're probably gonna be moving, at, if we're moving this object, at 200 pixels per second, and this one is gonna be 500. Let's go into the event sheet and just understand this a little bit more. So if I add an event to our enemy here, and I compare the speed, and I find if it's greater than or equal to, let's go down here, greater than or equal to, and you'll notice that you have all of your other order of operations here, all of your comparisons, perfect. Um, if it's greater than or equal to, uh, what we want to say here, if it's greater than or equal to 200, and let's copy and paste this, and let's find out if it's greater than or equal to 500. So now, these are only going to fire off on specific instances, this one, will always fire off because of the fact that it will always be greater than or equal to 200. But this one will only fire off on the first one if it's greater than or equal to 200. It won't ever fire off on this one. So this one I can tell it to have an opacity, set the opacity of 10, and this one can have the opacity of 100 like this. Now, this is actually conflicting because of the fact that this one's greater than, but this is my example just that you can now target these. You can filter these out in code. So that's really important to understand. The other thing that's important to understand, actually I'll put these back, uh, is to know that Construct2 reads events from top down. So this event gets read first, then this one, and they both get read at 60 frames per second. Usually that's how fast your computer is going. I mean, if you have a really slow machine, then it won't run at 60 frames a second, but that's the modern standard these days. So it's going to run these events 60 frames a second behind the scenes. And when it finishes, when it gets past two, that's when it draws to the screen. That's when it makes the images that you see on the screen. So it's really important that we understand uh, those things. It's important that we understand that this reads from top to bottom. There are other important events that will come up, will come across, but I really just wanted to make this clear. that This is a copy. This is an instance of this object. This will start to make more sense. We'll come back to this example as we uh, get into instance variables and whatnot where they're more useful than just tweaking the behaviors, but that is another option you have with instances in Construct 2. So thank you for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.